All right, so new map. I'm going to start a new series for uh, beginning players. So first thing you want to do when you first spawn into a map is just click on a resource. You're probably going to want to do copper first. But this way, while you're building, you'll still have to act, um, like a little flow of copper coming in. So you see how it just keeps mining even though I'm placing down structures. And then leave space. Uh, for belts in the future. So here I've got the copper belt. I've routed it so that every machine has access to the belt while still allowing me to put a new belt right here for um, lead. So let's go ahead and get the lead started. And we don't want these belts to... Um, so right here, if we put a machine down, we would be mixing copper and lead. We don't want to do that. So instead, let's pull this guy off and go down right here. So now this machine is going here, and this can be pure copper, and this can be uh, just lead. Let's go. Let's get a few more of these guys down, and we'll set up that new chain. And you know, same while you're doing this, be getting the next resource. So when I put down that belt, you saw how it was going like that. You can start the belt here now and get that turn. Another thing that you can do is if you want to cross over a belt without um, mixing them, you can just drag it across and it will automatically put down a couple junctions, which can be helpful. So let's say we have some, some lead down here, right? We can make a new belt and just go right across the copper belt and then drag it across to complete that lead belt. Okay so you've got the initial production down when you first started the game. Next thing you want to be focusing on is getting a little bit of coal. Coal is going to be used for a few different things but the first one is graphite. So let's get a couple of those down. How I like to do graphite is like this. So you put down a line of graphite presses. In the beginning you probably only need about four and then do a router here and a sorter right here and make sure that sorter is on graphite and then do a conveyor belt through and I'm gonna do it like that. So what this does is as the coal is being mined it's gonna route into these two machines and they're gonna output graphite which is gonna flow through and this sorter is gonna prevent anything but graphite from going straight. So coal is going to be diverted to the left or right into these machines will be processed and then fed through. So that will handle all the um, coal that's being produced with a little node without clogging. Okay, so now you got a little bit of graphite. So let that build up a little bit. And then once you have enough, you can start putting down these pneumatic drills. So right, right off the bat, our biggest bottleneck is going to be coal. You don't see any coal right here. So do a little bit of a survey and try to find what resource is going to be limiting you. And on this map it looks like coal is going to be the most difficult. But let's get a, another few nodes on line of coal and bring those back to base. On this one it doesn't look like there's any space that we can bridge across. Uh, the bridge conveyor can go across maximum three blocks and what other thing you can do with a bridge conveyor is you could just make a chain like that but since we don't have a easy way to traverse this water let's go down we can either go down and around here but that would make it a little more difficult when we develop a thorium or we can go up and around so I'm gonna go up and actually I'm gonna to leave a little bit more space for belts in the future why don't we bridge across right here and going down and over into our graphite production. Okay, so we've waited a few minutes. Um, so that you want to go a lot faster than I'm going right now when I'm explaining, but the next thing you're going to want to do is get uh, your drills upgraded. So coal is the limiting factor. We need a lot of graphite to build up the next production chains. So 
we're going to put down these pneumatic drills, which are a little bit faster than the mechanical ones. The mechanical ones do 0.34 per second. These pneumatics do 0.48 on a cluster of four. So now that we have that down, our next sort of bottleneck is going to be power. So the next thing we want to build is silicon production, but we can't do that until we have power. So what we're going to do just for some easy power is to branch off into a line of routers. So you can do like that and then set up a few combustion generators. And those combustion generators need to have a power node like that. And I'm going to throw a few batteries onto the system and those will start to charge up. Um, if you put down your power nodes after the fact, it will connect all the new structures. So I'm going to do like that. There we go. So now all these batteries are charging. Okay, so there's two things you need for silicon production. You need sand and you need um, coal. So let's look around here. We have lots of sand around here and we have a, our coal line here. So this is a deep fairly decent area to put down our silicon production. So one thing I have is a schematic. So if you click T on the desktop version, you can put down save schematics. So I'm going to show you how to build this and how to save this. So the schematic works like this. It's a, a row of routers and junctions that are offset by one like that. So there's our routers there's our junctions and then we want to do a line of belts five six seven eight so this is enough to put down four silicon smelters and how this works is we can now get a line of sand oh sand goes into one And right now we're being bottlenecked by our copper production. So early game, it is possible to build this unit. It's a uh, 30 copper. So I'm gonna hit E to resume uh, to pause building and start mining a little bit of copper until I can build one of these drug miner drones. So these things do require power just to spawn the unit. But after the unit's been spawned, you're, uh, there, there shouldn't be any power consumption. I don't know if that's a bug and it's gonna be fixed later. But for now, that's how they work. But these guys will go to an open node and and mine it out so that will help us giving us a little bit more copper all right next thing we want to do we're going to create a line of coal going into this top row so we're going to route it and go across like that and we need our output for the um, silicon and we can go Let's go over one so there's not a problem with the belt, and then down. And try to keep our belts as neat as possible. Okay, so we have power here. Let's go up and over with the power. And once the first machine is connected, you can sort of branch off those machines. So one thing you can do is put a node right here. And that's going to take the power from the powered machine and feed it into the next row. All right, so there we go. We have uh, silicon production, and it's going to be pretty slow because we're bottlenecked by this coal. And because we don't have enough coal, these generators are going offline. So what can we do to help fix that? A couple pneumatic drills would help. The other thing is that these pneumatic drills can be sped up with a bit, little bit of liquid. So we could put down a water extractor right here, and that's going to boost these drill speeds uh, pretty significantly. We went from about 0.48 to 0.23, so almost a two and a half times speed up. And you can see more information about that by clicking on the question mark. So there we go, got a little bit more coal. I'm going to show you how to do a schematic now. So when you're building, what I like to do is hold F and you can copy. And now I can use my mouse wheel to rotate that. And I can put a whole new line down right here. 
So let's say that I wanted to expand silicon production because it's a little bit further in the game now. So I'm going to bridge those right there. Hold F on the keyboard. Copy it over. Use my mouse wheel to rotate. And just plop down a line of these guys. And it's going to use the existing routers and junctions to feed these guys. Okay, and when I have something selected like this with a schematic, I can actually hit down here and do save schematic. And I can say, name this silicon. So there we go. Got a little uh, schematic now that I can use in a new game. So to use it now in a new game, I hit T, click on the schematic, and start placing it. So there's an example. And this is convenient because now you can build out a, a schematic from uh, memory rather than having to manually place all the blocks. So there we go, got a little bit of silicon production, uh, got decent graphite production. One thing we could do here is, um, you know, if you want to expand graphite, use F to select it, plop down that, and now you just need to replace this router. And that silicon production, uh, the graphite production has now been expanded. Let's get a better example. So here's the line of silicon. You can hit E to go into those like blueprint mode where you can lay out all your structures before you build them. One thing about building is that if you make a mistake and you have to deconstruct the building, you only get about 50% of your resources back or whatever the map's been configured for. Default though is 50%. So let's remove that guy and then hit E to resume the into build mode. So there we go, got some basic resources started. Uh, another thing that we're gonna wanna start doing is upgrading our belts to titanium. So titanium throughput is 10 items per second versus the regular conveyor belts, which are 4.2 items. So we're not having any issues right now with congestion on these lines, but say we got this whole um, lead production online. Uh, of the ore. You see how there's congestion right here. This uh, line is waiting for this one to have open slots before adding new items. So to upgrade to the next line of belts, you need to have titanium. And you can't put a regular mechanical drill on titanium. So you have to have graphite production at a minimum. But you don't need silicon. You could do titanium before graph uh, silicon. So there we go. Got a little line right there. If I remove that block, I can put it like that. And let's go over, down, over, and then use that junction trick to put the automatic junction down. Okay, so now we have some titanium feeding into the core, which is going to allow us to upgrade belts to titanium. So there we go. So you can if you start like that and you do a whole row and you don't have enough titanium, it's going to wait and block items from going in. So do small stretches and look at your indicator. So I currently have 10 titanium stored, so I can do a line that's 10 long. So I'll, I'll pick a spot that's you know closer to the target and do small batches. That way you don't have uh, a situation where no resources are going into your shard, your core shard. So there we are, we got a little basic setup here. We have all the base resources that we need to start doing things like thorium. So thorium is a late game power and a great defensive tool, but you've got your mechanical drills which can't mine it, you have pneumatic drills that can't mine it. You only can use laser drills or air blast drills. Laser drills require silicon and titanium, so you have to get these two online but then you can go ahead and place these down. So find the area that covers that the drill covers the most nodes. In this case, it's the 3x3. Three three. So there we go, have that down. And I, let's do a little test here. Does this drill produce anything? No. So the drill has some requirements. It needs power. So now that we've unlocked silicon, we can use these bigger power nodes, which are nice because they have a longer range. So now you can see the drills actually operating. So we get 1.2 per second, 1, 2 per second on a 3x3, three three, totally covered. But if we put down a water extractor, which does require power, that drill speed boosts to almost 3. 
per second, which is really nice. All right, so that's some how you get the basic production chains down. Well, let's start talking about defense. So here we have some deep water. You can tell that it's deep water because you're not able to place any structures in the deep water. Deep water is not traverse. Uh, you can't traverse deep water with ground units. Only flying units can um, sort of bypass it. So we can use this to our advantage. We have different types of walls. We have copper walls. And copper walls have health of only 320 on the small version. And the large version has 1280. So using the large version where you can, it's much better because it can soak up a lot more damage. So if you do something like this, you can block off the unit pathing of ground units and they won't um, go this way now, which means we don't have to defend this area as heavily. Same thing over here, if we could put down a choke point, we can block unit pathing through there. So now we've forced all the enemy units to sort of funnel down the center area where we can bottleneck them and uh, defend a little lot more easily. So we have large copper walls that have 1280, uh, titanium 1760, uh, plastanium is pretty good. Uh, but it's a little more complicated of a production chain. Thorium is a nice trade-off, and thorium is pretty easy to get set up a miner for. But now that we have some thorium, we could do a couple blocks here, and we can start a defensive line. So there's different ways to do your defenses. Uh, your first defense you could probably do is just something simple with some copper. And this is something you do right off the bat in a game. You do a line of routers, and now you can do a line of duo turrets. Duo turrets are like the most simple of turrets, but their ammo is pretty easy to get with copper, or you can use one of these upgraded ammo types. And they have decent range, and they target air and ground units. So a bunch of different benefits. Uh, for your early game defense. Another thing you're going to want is some air defense. So if you're playing a multiplayer match, um, most of your um, uh, most of the enemy team is going to be using a flying type because that's the default. In that case, you're going to want to set up some turrets to defend your production chains back behind the lines. So let's say we have this down. If you if you put it back here, you can only really get one turret on this side and one there. If you move this forward one, it's going to have one less resource node, but now you can do two scattered turrets on that side. So if you do some sort of like checkerboard pattern, that's going to be probably your most effective. And then get like a, a line going down like that and a couple of route, a router or something like that. Okay, so now we can put a scattered turret there, 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 and there. And it's okay that they don't have a ton of uh, lead going out here because uh, these guys just need to fill up their ammo capacity and they should be able to handle a, a small amount of flying units in a cluster pretty easily. One thing that does make it a little easier is once you have thorium or once you have titanium, you can actually build these uh, containers and vaults. So a container is going to add um, onto the storage capacity. See the capacity is now 4.3 down up from 4. So these share the, the same internal storage and allow you to belt into a few more areas. So if you've reached thorium you might want to start rerouting your belts. So one thing you could do is like this and put down a vault. Okay, one one issue I have here is we have this miner which is now feeding into these belts, which is a problem because now we can't. It's jammed at the belt. Coal doesn't go inside of a vault. So there's a couple ways you can fix this. You can do junctions here, which is probably your easiest fix, and make sure. Oh, so here's the issue: a bridge conveyor. So anywhere where you have uh, contamination on the line, you need to bridge across. Use a bridge or use a junction to prevent the items from flowing through. So what a junction does is sort of spans the gap. So that's one way to do that. Um, oh. 
or you can use these armored conveyor belts. Armored conveyor belts are a little bit different. They don't accept input from the sides, so you can't use them past a row of miners. They won't um, grab the inputs, but they're really nice right here because they could prevent the contamination. So another thing about armored conveyor belts is they have 180 health versus uh, 65 only for the titanium belts and 45 for regular conveyors. So armor belts are nice on the front lines because they're a little more hardy so they can deal with a little bit of aerial bombardment. Uh, one, one thing about air units you need to take into consideration is that they target your power infrastructure first. So a cluster of air units could fly over, destroy a few belts, and destroy some of these uh, power nodes which would hurt your frontline defense a little bit. And so you need to be checking occasionally your uh, conveyor lines to make sure that there's no issues there. Oh, so we have our, our line of um, lead. Let's link that in now. All right. And let's go back and talk about a little bit more things about defense. So we've got scatters now, we got duos. Here's a scorch unit that uses coal or pyrite. So if you had a bunch of coal, which on this map you're not this specific map you're not gonna have a ton of coal but you could do a router chain into a line of scorches and they don't have a ton of range 7.5 blocks but they do a, a decent amount of damage and they fire quickly another thing you could do is hails hails are a artillery turret and one thing they shoot is graphite which is probably the easiest ammo type to make in the early game but same thing, if you had a coal line, you could do a router. And you feed that router directly into a graphite press. Now the graphite press won't output graphite onto this side since it's an input, but you can do an output and you could do a router. Into a hail turret. And that's going to be fed. Another thing that you can do, it's a little bit more, uh, same thing with the health on the front line, but a distributor can output to seven sides. So eight would be the max, but it has an input side. And it has, it, but one thing about distributors, they can only hold one item at a time. But now you can put hail units down on every side. Another thing you could do is you could skip all that. And this uh, silicon press is this graphite press is going to actually output automatically into each one of the sides. So that'd be one air way that you could set up a, a little uh, cluster of hail units to reach all the way to that, that wall. So if you're actually fighting an enemy, you're going to start to get some attacks here, and this wall is going to get damaged. And over time, these are going to get destroyed. So either you have to be checking on them and putting down replacements or you can actually use a, a line of power to the front line to power menders so let's build a little line over so this has a range to there let's get this back a little ways so that it's not in the line of fire but now we can put down a mender which is a it uses less power per tick and it um, but it has a decreased range and doesn't do as much healing And then you have the MEM projector, which is just an upgraded version, has a little bit more range. But I like to do a few MEM projectors that can cover while still be being off the front line, allowing you to put down some other types of weapons. So now that you have pretty consistent power, except for the fact that I'm negative right now, you could do things like put down energy weapons. So you have hails, you have waves which shoot water, and you have lancers and arcs. Arcs are like a chain electric blast, sort of like a Tesla coil, and they can target multiple enemies, which is um, pretty
pretty nice, but the range is a little bit lower. So I like to do arcs in the front, followed by a couple lancers behind. And these lancers have long range and they shoot an energy pulse um, at the enemy. Well, these do that shock damage. So combine the two of them are pretty effective. And as long as we leave a, a square open in this wall, the enemy's gonna by default path through it. So we can do that and remove this mender to give us a little more power. So we're still negative 96 though. Not where I want it, right there. And then we wanna have a couple of steam generators that accept coal and water. So we can get the coal from this line and we get the water from either a water extractor, which is probably pretty easy, but we're going to have to do something called kickstarting. So these, uh, d this doesn't have any water right now, so it can't start the engine. So we need to get another power source. So maybe use a router again next to a combustion generator. And there we go. So it got a little bit of uh, power, so it has water. So that's one power source. Um, there are others like thermal. Let's see if we have a, here's some thermal generation. But this is a lot closer to the front line. Usually they're a little bit further forward on maps. But these produce power over time uh, without any inputs, which is pretty nice. So let's see what we're missing right now. It's metaglass. Okay. So going back down here, how do we make metaglass? So go to your factory tab, and it's under the, the kiln item. So it takes lead and sand as its inputs. So where do we have lead? We have lead right here. And we need something very similar to over here. So let's just copy this guy, and we'll plop that down. And we'll put down kilns instead of the um, silicon smelters. There we go, there's a line of sand. It's gonna go up and over. And we can branch off this uh, lead line directly into there. But this does require power. So let's get that connected to the node. I'm gonna take thorium offline for a bit and take our silicon offline. There we go. Let's see if there's any more lead we can tap into. We got thorium here, we got titanium. Um, there is our first meta glass though. Another thing you could do is, I'm, I'm low on lead here. So if I had a bunch of lead stored, I could actually build an unloader. Currently it's set to graphite. I could change it to lead and feed right into that line. So there we go, now we have lead. I use something like this later in the game to start building units. So this is pro the, a couple things you, you still need to know about the game that's uh, conduits. So let's replace this water extractor with something that's free. So these produce six water per second. So let's get a couple of those. And we can use some of our metaglass to make a line going into each one of these um, steam generators. And now we can get rid of this water generator. And these are both now filled with water. And you can make sure that it has enough water by going to the steam generator and let's see what, how much water it takes. Three water a second. And what did it say these produced? Six water a second. So you could actually power um, several steam generators with this water. So there we, go. we have metaglass now and we can see how much is stored. We have enough now to actually go over here and build the uh, thermal generator. So instead of routing your power line through where the enemies are going to be, try to do it behind the lines. As much as possible, we can actually go over here. That might be a little bit better. Yep. 
So see if you can you can bridge the water. We can right there, so that would work. And now we're in plus 207. So this produces 297 right there. Say we had a bunch more. Here's a, a one that does 300, but I want to make sure we get the best coverage. And we have no uh, nothing underneath there, so we can go ahead and do that. And we're actually out of uh, silicon. So let's go back to the main line and make sure that's all connected up. Yep, now we're producing again. And let's connect these into our uh, the rest of our power grid. And we can actually remove this for now. So if you hover over the power grid, you can see how much power is currently being produced, if it's an excess or a deficit. And you can also go over here to the power tab and we can put down some batteries. These are nice because they'll take the excess power and then during combat and times when we need a lot of production, it will start to pull from these batteries. So let's let this fill up and we can see that the total storage on the network. Um, right now it's about 8,000 out of 100,000. There we go. Let's get a few more of these guys online. So we're currently plus 800 and now we're plus 1500. That's how you do water and that's also how you do oil. Um, this is an oil patch right here. So the different types of pumps, this one requires um, power. It requires nine power units per second and it, it produces quite a bit of liquid. Or you have a thermal pump. That does 90 a second. That's pretty incredible. All right, so we're going to do our first more complex chain, uh, which is going to be uh, a coal centrifuge. So coal centrifuge takes in oil and gives out coal. So if we get a couple pumps going, we can. Um, Use a pipe and a liquid router like that. Now we can put down a bunch of these factories for coal. This does require power. but these produce a ton of coal. There we go, it's an almost continuous line. And these require, how much oil per? 2.7 oil, a single pump will pump six. So you can do two coal centrifuges on a single pump or what if we upgraded these pumps? If you did a thermal pump, you could supply, um, what, 30, like five coal centrifuges um, with this one pump. Or you could just do a, you know, 48 is probably sufficient. So th there's all kinds of these like more mid game items, like plastanium is used to, um, build these upgraded belts and it's probably used as a production chain for some other buildings like this oh that you just search alloy here's a different mech pad so this is a cool thing if you um let's put down a few of these guys so we have alpha delta and tau pretty expensive um but if you've reached sort of this phase of the game, now you can go over to these these pads and change your your mech uh, your um, unit type for your personal character. So now I'm a ground mech. What if I want to be a? Let's see what a delta is. And you're still able to fly. Oh, be careful in the water. Water will kill units. And then here's a uh, tau mech pad. This is like a healing unit. It can repair things. And if you hold shift, I believe you can fly still. 
So I'm walking around, I can't, there's some structures I can't actually walk through, but if I hold shift, I can now fly. All right, so that's what that looks like. Let's see what other production chains we can get started pretty easily. Plastanium requires titanium and oil. Let's do the uh, liquid first. So you're going from here to there, here to there. Bridge conduit, bridge conduit. So try to make it sort of stackable so that you can, you know, copy. But let's do liquid router, liquid router, conduit. And now I'm going to put that um, line of titanium right through there. And we can do a router, router. And then the output will be here. And we're going to need some power. So let's get a line of those going. There we go, plastanium. Now we can route this belt back. So once you've reached this phase of the game, start looking at the other um, factories. Um, I'll probably do follow-up videos on how to build these designs a little more compact and how to, um, some default schematics you could probably add to your account. And I'll link all those on my Discord so you can have a look there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps you in the beginning uh, an early game. Um, especially if you're a new player. I, I really recommend the, to, um, the tutorial and the campaign. Um, they show you all the basic concepts, but if you want to just jump in and have uh, some fun, go ahead and check out the a Tanner Gaming um, PvP server. Um, I'll link that in the description as well, but it should be on the official server list. But we have a bunch of custom maps, and you can sort of learn from other players as you see their designs. Anyway, good luck, guys, and have fun in industry.